We have. We've been busy. Well, everybody, a lot of things going on. A lot of things. I've been talking to Carlisle Johnson and, and Dee Cantrell about the trainer show. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be gonna, great. They're going, yeah. Well, they're going to four days. Yeah. Well, that's like the, the old schedule. Yeah. yeah. Well, four days, 19 classes, you know, 20 a night. Everybody be out there Perfect. for 10 or so. Yeah, but, but you know, everybody go eat and all here's, that. Here's the key. What? Trivia questions every night. Trivia. Uh-oh. They asked me to give hey, them one. It, I gave them one. Is it paying any money? No, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but I, I do know. Hey, if it's paying a little money, Tommy's going to be in on that deal now. But you'll probably know. It'd be better than the crap answer. game. Yeah. Cause he asked me a few of them when I was talking yeah. to him about the ones they already got. And and I got one of them I just knew I was right. And I said, no, I said, I'm wrong. That that That's wrong. And then I named the one that was right. Yeah. <laughs> So he said, you're right, but he said, a lot of them know anyway, especially the old timers, they like, like me, they'll know a bunch of them. Quick one. Yeah. What was Ritz's original name? I have no idea. Desert Storm Commander. Desert that was his Storm name. Desert Storm Commander. You know, that might be a, a good trivia. What was Shout to remember? Write that shout, down. Shout. Her name was Bowles Gold Trinket. Bowles Gold Trinket. Because she was born sorrel huh. and turned gray. As a living break. Now, y'all heard it from Tom. No, yeah, it's fact. You, <laughs> you hey, what, look it up. Before we get started, we need to take a short pause Please. for our sponsors because without them, we wouldn't be here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KB Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or by the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for All, so good. More of What a Horse coming up. Okay, got some announcements to make. 
got to do this Snapwood barn party this weekend. Yep. 25th, 26th. Tommy will be there. Now he's supposed to have video from there for us. We will. To show y'all They're next loading week. up. There's a bunch of them loading up tomorrow and going up Wednesday. So it'll be, it'll Friday be night will be a big night. Saturday is kind of the deal. Be there Friday night. Trainer show is next month, uh, the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 19 classes a night. Listen to this line up. Dean Baird, Smoky Cardwell, and Robbie Spiller. Show starts each night at 6 o'clock. Anybody interested in helping in this show, getting sponsorships, whatnot, call D. Cantrell at 706 366 one zero one one or Carlisle Johnson nine three one six three nine three nine four nine. Guarantee you it's going to be good. Oh, it's gonna be big, everybody's gonna to come to town. And and one thing, Jerry, is I've noticed this lately. When these horse people come to Shelbyville, Tennessee, and I've lived here now three years, thank them. If they're in a restaurant, if they're in wherever, if they're at the horse show, whatever, and they're from out of town. Yeah. Take the time, two seconds, and say, thank you for coming. Because, I mean, Appreciate they're bringing big-time money to Bedford County. Hey, the, the taxes stay low. Oh, yeah. Before we get into uh, our hot topic today, yeah. which is inspections, I'll say it out front, I do want to uh, take just a minute and pay tribute to I, I, Tomcat. Hey, Tomcat. I loved it. I mean, that cat was the, bad news. The, Jerry, there's so many families involved. All right, let's back up. The Burkses, uh, Carol Lackey and Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Then you go on to uh, Roy Western. Wester and his family. Then Jamie Lawrence and his family. Oh, oh, and all the, I mean, let me tell you what. So uh, some investor friends of mine at my son's barn, Wesley Williams, mm -hmm. they bought four Tomcats. And the groom in the cross side is so attached. She was in tears when the horse died. Totally in tears. Well, I will because she deals this. with these colts every day. They bought four of them and they're outstanding. I'm going to tell everybody to remember this name and I think I'm going to get it right. Poke Salad and She's a hoss. <laughs> She's out there at Wes's barn now. I know. That's she a, looks like Shout. I mean, hey. she is Shout made over. And Johnny Puckett came and started Shout, came and looked at her. She is a hoss now. She, we, we talked about him the other morning. She's but a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, just take a minute. Here's a tribute to Hey Tomcat. Hey Tomcat wears the blue in our deep division of honor. See, that's what before you even turn white. Mm -hmm. Boy, you did it. Did, did they find out what it did happen? What, Tommy? Yeah. Most That's, important thing on there? Yeah. Did you see how he changed colors? Oh, yeah. He changed mm -hmm. colors. Let me tell you something, too. David, my brother, has attachment to every horse. He was a little shaken because it's so sudden. Jamie Lawrence was just at the barn looking at four of the offspring. Uh, a bunch of those guys with Tomcat hats on were up there looking at these four offstrings. And then David, my brother, calls me and says, hey, you, Jamie, I just talked, this horse has passed away. Total shock the next day. Well, you know, it, it, it is hard. It's, it's, it's agriculture. I talked to Blake. He called me, he and I talked quite a while, and I told him, he said, we don't know what it is yet. And I said, but you know, it, it very, you may never know. Right. I know when, when my little filly died out at Rising Star, mm -hmm. David come over and said, we just put her in the stall, said, we're going to have the 
Dr. Baker come look at her and said, something's wrong with her. Yeah. I walked over there and she was laying in a stall dead. I come you back never, and I told her, couldn't at, believe it. The, end, they couldn't tell what was wrong. It was an autopsy. If you set know. aside the roses and the blue ribbon circle room and the box seats and the cars and the jewelry and all this, it is agriculture. That's and it. they will live and die. I mean, just, it just in reality, it's what it is. I, 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 talked, I talked to a lady the other day on the phone. This is Tennessee walking horse people, folks, what I'm fixing to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> she says, well, I need to go to the doctor. I said, said, I haven't been feeling real well, but my horse is, is kind of ill, and I need to get to bet with him first. Now, that, that, that's walking horse They'll people. They'll do it. I know, that's walking horse That's people. why all of us are halfway sick. <laughs> Let's take care of the horse. And we'll check us yeah, out Yeah, we'll check us out. That, that, <laughs> that's a fact, know. though. That happens all the time. All right, we're going to talk about what's coming. Everybody knows the... Show season comes. Yep. First thing out of the bat, we, we start getting inspections, and sometimes these inspections go all over the place. Yeah. I remember a few years ago. People are worried about it right now, so. I know. They're, yeah. they're worried, but everybody needs to remember it is your right. You have the right to either you video or have someone video for you the inspection of your horse. Now, that's a law. Yeah. You cannot get by it. You you either live with it, or ain't nothing they can do about it. Yeah. I mean, if they if they hinder you, call the police on. Them. Yeah. I mean, and and that it wouldn't be so bad. But the fact of the matter is this: if that law was not needed because of what was happening in the inspection area yeah. when the USDA came to town, we wouldn't have that law. My question this week is, and it's hard, I'm, we hadn't discussed this. How can a veterinarian, if they're licensed veterinarian, disclose to anyone the condition of a horse when they are, uh, uh, they're policed by HIPAA laws, like medical? Why does the HIO know what the USDA says or vice versa? Because I asked a vet one time about a horse, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I said, what's wrong with the horse? I mean, what do the, he said, according to law, I can't discuss the health. My dad was a doctor, so I, I know this very well. I can't discuss the health of this horse. Great. So what are we doing here? I mean, this is a medical, if, if a horse has a scar, that, you know what that is? That's a medical condition. So why are they disclosing it to each and every, everybody in the world, putting it on, publishing a list on the internet, and this one has, you know, I've got scars on my body, but I didn't have them one week and they went away the next, you know. So see, that, that's the strange thing, but to answer your question, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I do know this. There, everybody says the Horse Protection Act is to protect the horse. Well, yeah. I disagree. Yeah. The, the Horse Protection Act is not to protect a horse, any horse. The Horse Protection Act is a targeting tool created by the Humane Society of the United States to where they've got something to point at about abuse. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if it was abuse, mm -hmm. then Billy Gray's a legend. And, mm -hmm. and of course, Billy's not with us anymore. But we, we got some video of Billy, and we're going to talk about Billy just for a minute. All right, let's talk. Billy Gray was in the walking horse industry for years, and of course, he was at the top of his game so naturally, they're going to go after Billy Gray. But Billy Gray outlaw Josie Wells at uh, Manchester. Uh, yeah, Manchester, three rails. Yeah, right there. But here, here's what I'm. He served a four-year suspension for a scar rope on a horse that never missed a show. Never missed a show. Now, if that horse was scarred, and as Rachel Caesar would tell everybody, yeah. once scarred, always scarred. She kept bringing this up when it comes to honors. Once yeah. scarred, always scarred. Where was the scar when the USDA inspected that horse through those four years that Billy Gray was on suspension? Post-show show, post scar rules make no sense whatsoever. That, that's what, you know who that is. Well, oh, Lord, hey, he is. Billy won. They won. Uh, 
You're here. He he won that fifty thousand dollar prize money that night. Yep. And uh, uh, golly, there was the horseman Kentucky was second. There was by uh, oh gosh, y'all, this is you're messing my brain now. There's Coach. Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell you, Bill, Billy Gray was, and he he was another one of these that he put his the horses above himself. Oh but, yeah. And I'm pointing this out to let everybody know that. I miss him to you, death now. I miss oh, him. I do too. But well, you I have people have the opportunity. Let me put it like that. If they think they are not being treated properly in the inspection yeah. area by the USDA, it is their right to exactly. video. Right. And believe me, you can video. We call them. I mean, as soon the first right out of the shoot, the first show that we could sit there and video. We got it. It's a law. Y'all went and testified before the committee in Nashville. I remember the video seeing the, you know, where y'all were giving the testimony. Right. Those committees are, I worked up there as a page for Tom Burnett, and uh, those are, those committees are a little on the flaky side. Okay. I mean, and so you kind of got to go with the flow. Uh, but y'all's testimony on this was brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what, Judge Matheny, he and I are good friends. Yeah. And, and I, he was on the, was he on the committee? No, he, he was one of us that helped us get it in. Right. So he told me, he said, right there, th this is after we got it passed and we were going to do an inspection oh. or a video talking about it. And we went back there to uh, do it. And he asked me, well, show me what they're doing back there. And I was showing him, well, Baker, he came over and made us leave. Why? Wow. And uh, said we couldn't video back there. You we can. Video, at the time, we wasn't videoed the inspection. See, we got it passed that week. Now, you, you'll hear him in the background. Turn it up. I'm just standing with the toe me. Okay. That he can't be down here. Then film it. <laughs> film it. You see what I'm talking about? I'm not really filming. I know. Filming. Filming. I know. I know. They think you. I know. But that's what uh, we're I talking will go, I will go tell them the situation. They give it. Tell, you tell them this is their last day. They can say that. The other signs are built in, and they can't tell us that anymore. Okay. Well, they, uh, now that was Billy that came over, but Baker had him come over there. Yeah. And uh, Judd told them, said, Y'all won't ever stop them from videoing again. <laughs> right, <laughs> and yeah. he meant it. But Judd, Judd was great. He put me with the right people. The bill got passed. And look, let's show the video of the bill being presented to... The legislature. That, yeah. Yeah. Representative Matheny, you're recognized on, on House Bill 2189. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 2189, <clears throat> simply states that unless otherwise prohibited by federal law, the owner of any animal that is subject to inspection in this state for the purpose of determining compliance with any statutory or regulatory requirement shall be permitted to personally record such inspection by audiovisual means or designate an agent to record such inspection by audiovisual means. And uh, I would like to go into recess in just a minute as soon as we get the technical difficulties worked out. The gentleman next to me um, brought this to me, not from the horse industry or from the celebration, but as a, an avid person that participates in that. And there's been uh, some, uh, what we would call some usurping of people's rights by the federal government, by them not allowing individuals to be present when their animals are being inspected. All this bill simply states, and I'm also prepared to uh, bring the Farm Bureau up here to speak on behalf of this bill, all this bill simply states is that you, if you have an animal that is being inspected by a state or a federal agency, that you have the right as that animal's owner to also have that, that inspection videotaped. Not to interfere with the inspection, not to add to or to subtract to it, but simply to record the inspection itself. And that's what this bill does, and he has some uh, testimony he'd like to give about the abuse that led to the necessity of this law uh, within the horse industry. Without objection, we'll stand in recess. We are in recess. Would you please state your name and where you're from and things of that nature. My name is Jerry Harris. I am with a small TV studio in Tullahoma, Tennessee. I'm just going to make this very short. We're, this is not against the HPA. What this is is asking for a video bill allowing people to video their inspections 
at horse shows. Uh, Kevin Shea, APHIS administrator, said he wants to eliminate the abused horse, but this is an example of the horses the USBA inspectors turned down, even though industry veterinarians and DQPs passed them. Auburn and LSU veterinarian schools checked one of these horses and said there was no scar or signs of abuse. But still, Rachel Caesar sent text messages to DQPs threatening them if they didn't turn the horse down. The industry went so far as to contract industry veterinarians to pre-inspect horses before they went up for their entry inspections to ensure only compliant horses would be presented. The USDA continued to turn down horses passed by the industry veterinarians. When the USDA arrives, they come not only with multiple inspectors, but with as many as nine armed guards. They continue to use tomography in open areas knowing it will show false readings and when taking pictures, they use a red light to cast a red tint to the horse's foot. Even though trainers look for any sign of a blemish before they go to a show, once there, they are faced with subjective inspection methods and explanations like these from the USDA inspectors. When you can feel the roll of the top of it, that's, that's scar, even if it's only two or three cells thick. Can I ask you to show me where the um, scar is that you say that you found, please? Sure. Once you put that away, you can. Okay. Uh, you need to leave the horse. So no one's going to no one's going to show me where the scar is uh, that no, they turned this horse down you on. To, you need to leave the inspection. Industry HIOs welcome anyone to video their inspections to prove our horse are being inspected thoroughly, even inviting Channel 5 News to video. But once the USDA arrived, armed guards removed them. Could you have her quit filming until we get outside? one of the USDA inspectors was charged with assault for slapping a cell phone out of the hand of a trainer videoing an inspection. Kevin Shea allowed videoing, but when one of their guards was charged with assault, he had all videoing stopped. Dr. Desjardins helped get permission for us to video during the celebration, but we had to do it from outside the arena. And this is an example of what the guards were told to do. It's not the, the people that are causing the problem. It's the USDA even blocking the video and when we can video. So what we're asking is for a law that will allow us to gain evidence to where when we go into court, we've got something to show what, what we're saying our horse, the condition we're saying our horses are in. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate you being here today and appreciate your words. And anytime we have a federal intervention of that nature, we have to take a special interest. Representative Matheny, we're back in session, and you are recognized again on House, House Bill 2189. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman and committee members. Basically, this came out of the horse industry as a, as a way for a legitimate trainer and owner uh, to be able to, to vend themselves based on hearsay evidence that the federal government was putting forward because they were not allowed to videotape their own evidence. Representative Just, Shaw, you're recognized. That right there was an example, and I will say this, it passed unanimously. Everybody. We had no. Pat Marsh, Judd Matheny, mm -hmm. the Farm Bureau, the Humane Society of Tennessee, all of them was represented there, and all of them backed this 100%. Mm -hmm. And then as right after that is when we caught them. But they worked so hard. These trainers worked so hard, like my son over at uh, yeah. Sugar Creek. They had, they had a DQP, like yeah. you're supposed to. Wesley led four up, four check, four were perfect, had a big day, okay? Yeah. I didn't go to Desert Storm to get shot at <laughs> for my kid to be in Shovel, Tennessee, being overrun by the federal government. Well, on, on inspection, a Tennessee walking horse that he absolutely cares for, like uh, his children, every single day. And they, it, 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 it offends me. You know, I take a deep breath and keep going. But it's offensive. I mean, it's offensive. But, you, you served from in Vietnam. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, and this is this to me. If the if the USDA does their job the way they're supposed to, yeah, I'm all for it. Humane societies in a humane societies in on. I know it, but no, at, least, at least be honest and 
And we know from past experiences, it's just like the those text messages that was in there. Right. Those text messages were sent and told to the DQPs that they had better turn right. down honors. Oh yeah, well, I remember that mess. Now my question is this, and, and this is the bad part about it. We got video of honors. Let, let, let's show video of honors. Go ahead. I mean, they were, they went through heck. Those they, people went through heck they with him. Won, they won. They <clears throat> they won their their classes. They showed how great honors was, but even what they went through, they had to get a federal judge. It was to torture. Say enough is enough. Yeah. Do not turn that horse down again. But even even after that, even after that was done, they still served a suspension. Yeah. Over the horse. And every bet that school they carried him to, every one of them, they got the same answer. Well, we can't Look find here. no scars on him. Ain't now I'm distracted. Larry Edwards ain't in his mouth whatsoever. Look here. Hey. Rain's flopping. Now, I'm, I'm sorry with the argument. I'm, I mean, not, I, if I hey. mess your argument up, now watch no. him. I watch, watch him that horse him. follow him around. Watch him pitch him reins to him. He yeah. ain't got no hole. He got a gator bit on. Uh, Gary Williams makes him down at Dothan. I bought the last set. wesley has got the last set out there tomorrow. Watch him. He ain't got no. He is not even pulling on that horse's mouth. I mean, that's what gets me. The what they and, and I don't know whether they just do it. Yeah. But, uh, because, well, that horse is real good. Uh, they've got to be doing something god awful to him. What about who's just bred to be a champion? Right. I mean, well, look at his colts this past year. I know. They're cleaning up. Hey, I'll tell you what's the funny part about it. The government is one of the major reasons, reasons for this. Mm. I can remember when everybody would go out and if they had a mare, they'd breed the mare. Yeah. Right? Well, wow. the government got so bad on turning people down that they stopped breeding. Remember, our breeding went way down. Yeah, that's the thing that bothers me the most because I was talking to a very good friend this week about data, about what two-year-olds bring, three, four-year-olds bring, what yearlings bring. The federal government will go out there and they will help the hog people about uh, getting bigger money for hogs or cattle or whatever. But there is no data, none, on what a Tennessee walking horse brings unless it's a meat packers report at auction sale. Yeah. Okay? That is a failure on the part of the USDA because they're spending all this time inspecting horses. How about the value of our horses? I mean, how about money spent, which is millions and millions of dollars in Bedford County? Why aren't they helping us sell more Tennessee walking horses? No, no, no. All they want to do is inspect them and eliminate a part of, of uh, oh, it's ridiculous. They're supposed to be an advocate for agriculture. In this case, they're not whatsoever. None, well, even, zero. If, when you go back, the, the industry got equine veterinarians to inspect horses before they ever went up to the government. Mm -hmm. And they would, now these are equine vets that their job is to protect us. Right. So they check a horse and they say, well, this horse is fine. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he'll pass. Yeah. Take him on up. Then they get up there and, and they don't pass because they've already got their agenda up there on who they want to turn down. I think the lawsuit, uh, the lawsuit question, all lawsuits are questions, okay? Yeah, it's just like down there at the bottom it says, please do because if he gets through, you. No, you guys will check, will catch heck. Now that come from Rachel Caesar wow, telling Mitchell Butler what to do. I can't. But when she, they carried these horses and had them checked, best by, veterinarian, love him, right. Dr. Do Tony Kimmins. Yeah, they couldn't find nothing wrong with them. But these vets that the government brings in, they find all kinds of things wrong. The only problem is they can't show it. LSU. I remember this one. I've seen it. LSU looked at this beautiful animal and had no issue. Oh, Auburn, LSU, who's this other one? There are, there are all kinds of them. I mean, it's one right after another. That and It's what, ridiculous. What, what, really, what really upsets me is this. 
it's just like a little later on we're going to show a video of a three-year-old that I can't show and I mean I, I was I was in love with him he, he looked great but he had warts I, I natural occurrence yeah I can't do nothing about it but he'll never pass inspection and I accept that no. I accept it because my veterinarian I said check him said Jerry he just won't no. but when these same vets check those horses prior to the celebration yeah. and then they went in there and they got turned down that's the same as saying that that vet does not know anything right. that he's incompetent when it's not the industry veterinarian the lawsuit everything's about a lawsuit yeah uh everything about a lawsuit uh had a good friend charles terry me and he used to talk about five times a week the lawsuit from the Tennessee Walking Horse to the federal government is the undue burden that they put on the industry on farmers, ranchers, trainers, owners, whatever. The undue burden is the lawsuit. They're putting on an unnecessary undue burden based on information that comes from a humane society, you know? Well, they All right, now that them. Horse Protection Act was a law. Yep, well, 50 not, years ago, we were They're not following, right, yep. it's crazy. Tell you what. We're going to take a short pause for our sponsors because they have paid the bills, believe now, me. Now, we're going to play, you know, no, we five ain't cards to no, we cut ain't high card. No, no, I ain't going to okay, do that. Okay. We're just going to go and let our sponsors have their word, <laughs> and we will be, we'll be back in just a moment. No gambling. <laughs> Jim DeWin started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jim would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the Amateur Four-Year-Old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both Amateur and Open Show Pleasure Divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both Open and Amateur Divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once and delivered to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. The Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner's circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner's circle when you're getting your equine needs. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Welcome back. You know, Tommy, we, we talked a lot about the inspection process and, and what goes on. Mm -hmm. But, and, and I'm a firm believer, 
when the government started inspecting and they, they every time if, if they got caught messing up on something they would make a rule like special on celebration no show back now that hurts celebration because one horse might be entered five or six times of course but if he got turned down the first day he couldn't show back no more so that that hurt how many times you're going well how, just how much do we want to gamble here so they had to make adjustments for all this but the government by what they were doing were was creating a necessity for this industry to start really thinking about their breeding and how they were going to breed and that's when I pay tribute to David yeah. because in David and Spencer Benedict and the others carry yeah carry brilliant they're that, brilliant people that started looking at bloodlines and matching them and then saying well why don't you cross with this yeah. and it's just like me when, when I started breeding Ruby I, I talked to Debbie and Frank and I said I want a breeder to every stud you got and whichever one comes up with the best ones one I'm gonna stick with yeah. well at the time arms deal for real wasn't even out there well yeah. but later on arms deal for real was and that's what I went that with. summer gun brought a million dollars that's right but I, I guess what I'm saying is by selective breeding yeah we have created a horse that if the same thing was going on today yeah. that was going on 50 years ago ain't no way this horse would ever ever be because right. I mean he, he couldn't do it these these horses are so fine bred and and it, it's kind of like building a race car it's data it's it's let me, let me back up and say this David doesn't mind saying it the David started taking data 25 years ago on all the two-year-olds, two-year-old amateurs, three, three-year-old amateurs, four, four-year-old amateurs, and put them in a database. He has a database out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no name for it. Nobody has access to it, him. No. He can pick, he, he doesn't sell stud fees. He sells probability, <laughs> okay? All right. He sells surety. You bring a mare in there, if the mare gonna cross better to addiction lineman, he's probably gonna tell you. And that horse is down the road. But he, and I, I, there's a movie, there's a movie I love called The Social Dilemma. And if everybody, if you want to learn about marketing and the horse business, you need to look at this movie. David out there sells probability, not just Jose or Lima Cash or, you know, any of Deal For Real or whatever. He sells the probable uh, result of the perfect match. He ain't into egos. The cross. He ain't right. The cross, you know. Yeah. So, that, so his big product is not the horses he has, which are, right. but probability is what is this is the product. I, I believe that. Yeah, it's fact. But it does it. It's these. We're we're, we're going to be showing some inspection video, but I want people to look at this because this is what led us to where we're at today and that led us to the point that we've got the horse that we've got to Look at this mess. It's because that's eye scan. Oh God. We went through so many hoops and hollers and all of it was done to make sure that the USDA did not screw up and say a horse was out and let that horse come back up there a little while later. I don't want him eye scanning me. Well, I walked up there and I was with honors and I heard, I mean, I heard it. Pop that eye scan, oh, this is honors. Well, it's so they know who the best horse is. is. Yeah. And I mean, that's what really gets me. That's crazy. It's, it, it is entrapment. Uh, well, that's it's like a, it's like a cop parking at the bottom of the hill waiting for a guy to come flying down there in a Chevrolet truck that has horrible brakes. <laughs> I mean, that is what it is. It's entrapment. Well, it's a little bit. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, Tommy. The HPA is is a Horse Protection Act. Now, mm -hmm. that's what it's supposed to be, but it is not. Mm -hmm. It's not a Horse Protection Act. 
If it was a Horse Protection Act, it would be protecting horses. Yeah. Not just walking horses, but racking horses, which it does, spotted horses, which it does, quarter horses, which it does not, saddlebreds, which it does not, thoroughbreds, which it does not, Frisians, and I can go on and on and on. We are the only one. The walking horse is the only one protected by the Horse Protection Act. Yeah. And it's really not protected. The eye scan, the eye, the eye scan is no different than Judge Russell up here in Shelbyville giving out a list of 100 people, hand the police department, said, y'all go watch these 100. Now that's not freedom. There's no freedom there. No. So it's we're targeting. Boy, it is. It's entrapment. It's in targeting. Well, that that's one reason why. And and we we could go through here, and I could I could show you video of like one time we would when we had scalpel set up out there. Yeah. We was up on scalpel videoing, and the two lady VMOs in front of us was giving hand signals, the same hand signal, both mm -hmm. of them, to the. VMO at the other end that was fixing to expect a horse. <laughs> you can make them all flinch. Hey. A, a, a horse, if you, there's nerve bundles here, nerve bundles there, nerves here, there, and the other, you can make them all flinch. I mean, you know, and then they turn around and say it was intentional soaring. Uh, we've had this argument for 30 years. Well, We've had this argument for 52 years. Yeah. 52 years. Yeah. I mean, almost as old as me. And I, uh, it gets old. And let me tell you the thing that gets old about it is children, kids. Mm -hmm. Kids want to show. They want to show, and then they go and they walk into this inspection area. And then everybody in the, every cop in America is in there checking their horse. Then they may have to go back to the trailer. Adults, we kind of get it. Explain to that 11-year-old kid well, you what, what's wrong with his, ho the, his horse. That's right. That's, that's the bad thing. It, it's horrible. I mean, well, Tommy, and, and, and it keeps a lot of kids from showing. Yeah, this is my feelings. And, yeah. and the USDA, Look they, here. they can get PO'd at me if they want to. But if they were doing their job properly, and because of their knowledge, look at this mess. They would not need that because they've been wrong on that. Oh God! That so-called super blacksmith that come in here was talking about the rotated coffin bone oh, and everything. Yeah. But when they carried them to Rude and Riddle and some of these other places, yeah, oh yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, hey, they couldn't find them. But this guy's brilliant. Oh yeah, he's smart. He can yeah. find some. I got you. I got news for you. A quack is a dime a dozen. Look here. And to me, that's what all he was, was a quack. Uh, we selling, trying to sell equipment. But if, they, if they've if they got the knowledge yeah. that they should have, yeah. if they inspected, if 10 of them inspected a horse and their horse had a problem, a scar root problem, all 10 of them be able to find it. If yeah. they knew what they was doing. Tim Hatfield, mm. great human being. Oh. Great human being. I'm telling you, I've learned a lot about him this past year. He's been a friend hey, of mine, a great guy. guy. I would not, he's not going to let a bad horse come in that rain. I mean, it's not going to happen. I don't believe he, he is either. He thinks more of the Tennessee Walking Horse. Than Tim Hatfield's outstanding. And to have Pittman, even so, Pittman is too. Now, he, he's good. Curtis, Curtis, yeah, Curtis oh, Curtis, perfect. Curtis They're super. all, yeah. Curtis. I mean, these guys, they know, I, I watched they Curtis, know horses. I watched They're, Curtis at a Sweetwater probably the most well-inspected horse show that I've ever been to. Tim Hatfield does what he does with Show H.O. We, we, ha we have the horse that our granddaddy's dreamed of having. Oh, Lord, yeah. And clean? Oh, come on. Well, Compared to the juvenile horses I showed in the mid-70s, uh -uh. it's not even the same, it's the same world. Well, I tell you right now, Mitchell Butler. Oh. Yeah, he left. Mainly, yeah. From and, and, and Mitchell's a friend of mine. I've known Mitchell for years. I, I used to cut hair with Mitchell's mother. Yeah. We go to hair shows together, and me and Mitchell run run the show. But it, his main reason for leaving yeah. was putting up with the government wanting him to do things that he knew was wrong. All right, let's back up and talk about this for a second. Now the trainer show's coming up. Okay. Right. 
uh, is the probability of the government showing up at the trainer show? Yes. Now, it's at, about a 99.9.9 percent that they will show up. If, it's inevitable. They will show up it, with this. It's inevitable. But what you got to do? They, what what you got? Up, look, you you. If they inspect your horse and you don't think they're being fair, you video it because they're going to be doing blood tests. They're going to be doing eye scan. They're going to be doing x-rays. They're going to be doing palpation. I mean, you name it, they're going to figure out a way to do it. And they'll probably come up with something new. Mm -hmm. Like they came up, they found out that our horse drives with a back end. Yeah. So they said, well, if a rock was to fly up and nick them in the back, that's soaring. I mean, oh, but, they're yeah, right. The I mean, back ankles. Oh yeah. We got trainers now that won't take the wraps off. You know, they keep them right behind while yeah. they're riding because uh, they're afraid. Well, they don't want to scratch on their back ankle. And, and, and that quarter horse woman, she said, I mentioned it to her about the uh, quarter horses and yeah. what they do. Well, the HPA doesn't cover them, and we don't intentionally do it. I said, so we do? You know when you yeah. do what you're doing, what's fixing to happen. Well, the thing is, well, all right, so if they do, if UFT comes to town, we got, everybody's got to take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath, mm -hmm. lead your horse up there. These trainers know how to put these horses in, great way, and do this, that, and the other. Don't, don't take the fun out of it because the USDA shows up. You I'm can't gonna, do it. I, I'm going to tell you a story. You can't do it. It's a true story. No. I ain't going to name the, the who was over the DQ, over the BMOs at the time, but right. it happened. It happened at Tunica, but this is exactly the way it went. I was standing there. She comes walking across at me, and they're doing the, and she says, I'm going to introduce, introduce herself, and I thought, I said, I didn't much think you'd want to talk with me. She said, well, y'all wanted to. She, we sat there and talked for a minute, uh -huh. and uh, I, I was just telling her, just come out and telling her exactly what I felt. Right. And I said, then there was a trainer. I won't name the trainer, but he was coming down through there. And I looked into where the BMOs was, and I saw what they was doing. I said, is that BMO right there? I said, yep. I said, they're fixing to turn him down. I said, to, I said, see that trainer? Yeah. I said, they're fixing to turn him down. She said, how do you know? I said, well, watch what the BMOs are doing. Leads horse in there. We watch him inspect. And I said, now, see that horse? I said, he's up looking around, watching everything going on. I said, look back there, his back foot. See how he's got that toe turned up? He's just standing there, he's relaxing. I said, there ain't nothing wrong with that horse. He's just happy as he can be. But they're fixing to nail him. But they all make him, they, you can pinch them all, make them move. As soon as he moved away, from the DQP, here come a VMO, cut him off, here come the other VMOs, they told him to go over there and they turned it down. Uh -huh. She turned around and looked at me and she said, we need to walk and talk. Happens. We well, got some more video. Go. <laughs> You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up.
Tommy, I'll tell you what I'm fixing. Let's do it. Well, I'm, I'm going, we're going to show a short video of uh, a three-year-old that the veterinarian broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, he did, but I mean, he was right, and I knew it was coming. I just didn't want to face it. But uh, things happen, and this right here is, is legitimate. Yeah. And and I I knew that if I ever carried this horse up to, because I like to leave mine through inspection. Of course, I, yeah. But I knew if I ever let him up there, show was going to get me. Curtis Pittman's going to get me. The USDA, if they was there, they're going to get me. If you're out, yeah. Whoever was there, they fixed to nail me for leaving him up through there. And ain't nothing wrong with him. But <laughs> war, warts? <laughs> warts. But let's go. Here, here's a short video. I can't pass. People talk about the care we give for these horses. Right here is a prime example of a horse that had a promising future, but we ended up having to make a trail horse and a field trial horse out of him, simply because he had warts. I had a veterinarian look at him and tell me, he said, Jerry, you can't show that horse. So a beautiful horse with a fine gait ends up being a trail horse because of much of mother nature, not something that we've done but something that just happens naturally sometimes. You can shoot around him, you can shoot off of him. So instead of being a show horse, Sci-Fi is gonna be out on the trail. Yeah, I'm talking to you. He pays attention, but he's also ready for another biscuit. Love him. Hey, love okay. him. If you ask me about my hair, I've been out in that wind. It was windy over That's, there. You know what, they, it's a, Arthur Gordon's got one just like you. They're so nice. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah, I will. <laughs> I guarantee you, I don't. I love one. this horse. Listen, Flax Man and Tail will sell anyway. I love this horse. He's broke, 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 broke. Oh yeah, he's broke. But I'm. Gonna, yeah. I was watching him, and, and even Roy Wester looked at him one time, and he said, "How much you want for him?" He, uh -huh. he was real interested in. Him. Well, he's but, he's a, he, just a good pleasure horse. Hey, but he he could flat walk and got a motor, but. It's just like Jerry says now that they could take him out and hook him to a cart. Yeah. Take him all over the place, bring him back, and he's ready to go again. Yeah. But uh, let me tell you, that's 16 that, hands. That right there, when I worked for Wilson Farm all those years, that it was a big point. You got all these show horses, okay? Yeah. That's why our breed is famous right there. Right there. Yeah. That gate. Because when those people get on those big trail rides out in the Midwest and they look over and their buddy's riding a quarter horse and that quarter horse is jarring their body frame for five miles, they the Eichlers are, can yeah. tell you about it. They look over and say, what's that? What is this thing that's smooth? And they, it's a Tennessee walking horse. Changes their whole outlook. That's why you got Bill Johnson in the horse business. That's why you had the Eichlers in the horse business. Because this horse right there at that stage was different than everything else. Let me tell you something funny about him. Yeah. I had him down at Taters, down in New York. Yeah, of course. And uh, he was working with him. Well, he got out of the stall, and he was outside. Mm -hmm. And Tater had been out there for about an hour trying to catch him. Yeah. Every time he'd get close to him, of course, sci-fi, he'd just take off. Yeah. We drove up. I got out of the truck, come around, and that sci-fi was way down to back of that path. On 41A? Yeah. Yeah. He looked up there and he saw me and he come and run it. Yeah, really? <laughs> and, and Tater, Tater told me. He's you know good. who Tater is? He's, oh, yeah. He's, he's a good. combat award winning army. I mean, he is a combat dude. I'm talking about something got shot at. Yo, he combat. Did, he's a good guy. Great guy. But uh, he told me if he'd known that, that that's all he had to do to get sci fi to come up there, he'd call me an hour yeah. That That horse. So this is out at the little yep, yep. at Uncle Nearest to yep. the right, or to the well, left. It's right behind the training barn. They're doing a lot. They're building a new road. Yeah. All that stuff. They're they're fixing to build on an arena with the back of it. It is gorgeous. But, uh, I was I came through there last night. God, it's pretty. But I can tell you that if somebody wants a good one for the trail, mm -hmm. I'd hate to, but I would I would I would turn loose of it. He's pretty, Flax Man and Tail. Armed and Dangerous yeah. made that famous. Yeah. He's over 16 hands. Yeah. He's just over 16 hands. Good horse, pretty horse. I yeah. just wanted to see. I tell you, I'm going to tell you one funny story, though. I carried my pistol over there, and I told Jeremy, I said, I said, 
we're going to see if we can shoot around him. Yeah. You know? So uh, Jeremy was out there. You didn't knock off a liquor store on the way, did you? No. Nah. Okay. I'll tell you what I did tell him. About. I said, <laughs> I'll bet anybody in here ten bucks that he doesn't he doesn't budge. And it didn't yeah. look like he did when I saw a shot. Nobody going. nobody would bet with me. Yeah. So they're out there and they're getting him ready to to shoot around him. Yeah. And uh, Jerry said something. And Jeremy thought they were ready. So Jeremy shot the gun down in the ground. Pop. Scared everybody around there but the horse. But the horse. horse. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> diving. Yeah. The horse, Brad said, Brad said he jumped, Jerry jumped, yeah. and the horse just stood there and looked. You can, Tommy Grider always said you can shoot off all of them once. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, that's like Jill, Jill Derrickson, and she said, for those people that have rode horses a lot, we have horses that have been rode a lot. So, well, they've for come those in. who have never ridden, yeah. we've got horses that have never been ridden. Right, exactly. <laughs> Everybody gets gets in on the action. When we were at Wise and Farm, we had so many great days out there, and shooting off of them was always a topic. Standing in the saddle on yep. one was always a topic. Oh, yeah. And Tommy Grider was so funny. He said, you know what? I've had to do that before. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, I bet you have. Oh, my Lord. But I tell you what, this right here is what makes our horse great. Yeah. There's always a place for the horse. Now, my dream when I got this horse, was yeah. I wanted to see him in the show ring. Well, of course, yeah. And I would watch him out there, and and Dick worked with him. Mm -hmm. Jerry worked with him. Uh, I mean, it. And Jerry, Olivia Ball we, showed him, did she not? Who? Didn't not, Olivia not, show him? No, Olivia, Olivia didn't show him. She showed on the slide. Okay. But uh, yeah, she rode this. She was the first person to ever ride sci fi. Yeah. But Dick worked him for a while. Jerry, uh, Beatty worked him for a uh -huh. while. And then, then I put him out, Jerry William. But we all had the same problem. We was working on the warts. Yeah. And finally, I Can't just said. Can't do about him. Well, that's what I, when I talked to Dr. Mullins, he told me, he said, Jerry, he said, you've done everything you can. Yeah. But that, there's no way you're going to be able to show that horse. I mean, he's not going right. to go. So that that was. We got tons of good vets, and the, the great thing we got tons of good, well, honest vets. It'll tell you what the yep, truth. Yep. He he, he, he could have he could have had bills on that horse forever. Oh, look, go ahead he, and just. He says, "I know you ain't gonna like what right. I say." Right. I said, "Well, what is it? Who was it? Mullins? Yeah, Mullins. Yeah. Doctor Mullins. But uh, he's a good. I love. Hey, I love. I love them Steve. all. Yeah. They all a bunch of good people that give you an honest answer to your needs, and that's something we should respect. Yeah. Remember, trainer show coming up, video. If you've got a question about the video of your horse, protect yourself. Video. Second thing. You got 20, 20 seconds. seconds. Come to Bedford County and have fun. So Set all this aside, bring your horses, have a big time, eat the, the foods quite good here. We got everything. The distillery, we, we got tourists, you can go to Second right. Avenue National. Come to Bedford County. See you next week. See ya. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, peace, start talking.